Uh, Natasha Curry, thanks for joining us on Weekend Express. Appreciate it. While you were sleeping, the Senate passed a bill that gives the government money to operate for another six months. Libyan protesters have taken over the headquarters of a radical Islamist group tied to the deadly U.S. consulate attack. Some interstate drivers could not believe what they were seeing. Take a look for yourself. You see that? That is a woman holding on to the hood of her boyfriend's SUV for dear life. You can almost see her through there, the windshield, I think. Uh, police, there you go. Police near Atlanta said that he was going as fast as 80 miles per hour. Several drivers worked together to slow him down. Was she hanging on the windshield wipers? The boyfriend faces several charges, including assault with a deadly weapon. His girlfriend says that she jumped onto the hood after an argument, and she had several chances to jump off before he got onto the highway. She just hung on. He is an award-winning artist, a political activist, and now an author. Wyclef Jean has written his autobiography. It's called Purpose, an Immigrant Story. Welcome to the show. Thank you Great for to me. have thank you, you thank here. You, you. Now, you, when you were, you grew up in Haiti, of course, yes, yep. but you left there, you went to Brooklyn. Uh -huh. What was that like? Tell us about your childhood a little bit, because your dad was a minister, right? Yes, You're a my, PK. I'm a straight PK. Shout out to all the PKs <laughs> out there. Um, uh, but he basically struggled. My story's an immigrant sm story about the book. You're going through and how bad you feel, somebody got it worse. So I want the kids to read my story to understand from a... Haiti's always just been there right in your heart with you. You started a charity. Tell us about yeah. that little... Well, first, new dog, Dr. Dre, the way they was doing with the West Coast. Yeah. And I always wanted to do that. My book starts off with the earthquake. Think you're going to run again for president? I don't know. Maybe in 20 years, you know? I don't know. <laughs> A city in Massachusetts is having its own garage sale. There are old cars up for grabs, even a school bus. Dozens of high school students are recovering from a school bus crash. It happened on a back road in Washington County, Tennessee. For Natasha, I went to that Monday night game with the Broncos Falcons. It was yeah. a disaster. But at this point, uh, the, the league and the officials met twice last week. They are nowhere near a deal. Uh, so, so far, we have no further talks scheduled in the near future, so this is not good. Yeah, it's not good. The fans get frustrated, like, just let me ref the game. It's no <laughs> better. I'm joking. But <laughs> I know the refs are doing the best they can, but thanks so much, Joe. You bet. Every weekend, HLN brings you those true crime mysteries that you love to solve. Tonight on Body of Evidence, two Florida women are found dead just hours before a hurricane strikes. Evidence suggested they were killed by an experienced criminal. Happening today, some big names are playing in Hershey, Pennsylvania for Farm Aid 2012. The concert raises money for family farms. There will be no smiling on your driver's license pictures anymore, at least in Jersey, that is. That's right, Jersey's DMV says smiling apparently messes up its facial recognition system. A DMV rep says that you can look pleasant, maybe a small grin or something. Just don't be cheesing like you just won the lottery. A man is accused of crashing his SUV straight into somebody's apartment, then leaving his little stepdaughter in the car. Firefighters in Pompano Beach say that the four-year-old girl was not in a child's safety seat and was not wearing a seat belt. A man in Carson City, Nevada, apparently left his fortune of gold coins in his house when he died. Nobody even knew about it. Okay, from the players on the field to the analysts in the media, there has been a whole lot of criticism heaped on the NFL replacement refs, but fans are still flocking to their TVs and to the stadiums. But will this growing dissatisfaction with the replacement officials have an impact on the game? Dan Simon takes a look. Two wildfires in Washington state could merge into one giant fire of more than 100 square miles. That would be bigger than the entire city of Seattle. Peanut butter lovers, check your jars. Trader Joe's Valencia creamy salted peanut butter made with sea salt might be linked to a salmonella outbreak in several states. That includes me. I got to go home and check. Trader Joe's says if the use by date on your jar is May 23rd, 2013 and June 28th, 2013, you need to toss it out. The company's pulling it off all the store shelves. What a game, and a high school softball player scored the game-winning run because the other team carried her across the plate. Judd, this story really defines sportsmanship. Defines sportsmanship, and this is in, I've seen a, a player not be able to get his ball out of the glove and just toss the glove over to yeah. first base. But what do you need? Take a shirt <laughs> off and toss it? No, not in You just got to shake it. All right, <laughs> thanks, Joe. Yeah. This year's top CNN heroes have been announced, and now you get to decide who wins the top honor. Anderson Cooper shows you how. 
But nearly 45 million students ride a school bus every single morning, and every year dozens of bus accidents like these put kids in danger. Would your son or daughter know how to get out alive? There is a new push teaching kids in a fun way how to be safe. And our big thanks again to Big Creek Elementary School in Cumming, Georgia, for giving us special access to their training day. Army Sergeant Davin Dumar lost a leg while serving in Afghanistan last year, and he's getting some amazing help starting his new life back in the States. He's one of the troops that HLN is recognizing for their service. We're going to be doing this every week as we lead up to Veterans Day in November. But watch his story. Oh, so Natasha went to the Monday night game between the Broncos Falcons. It was a disaster. Yeah. You feel bad for these guys. They're trying their best, but come on already. Get a deal done and get these refs back. Yeah, hopefully they'll get a deal soon. Joe, thanks. Mm -hmm. A man was badly mauled when he jumped into a tiger's enclosure at the Bronx Zoo on purpose. The man is in critical condition. Nobody knows why he did this exactly, but his Facebook page reportedly, it features photos of tigers and lions and other wildlife. Some people on an amusement park ride got trapped 300 feet up in the air for two hours. The ride is a swing. It's called the Wind Seeker. Maintenance workers at Knott's Berry Farm in Southern California finally got all 20 people down. Look at them just hanging there. Nobody got hurt. This is the second time this month that the ride is broken down. Tom, I imagine yeah. they wow. uh, having some nightmares maybe last night. How yeah. scary. Yeah, oh, sure, but it beats two hours on a tarmac. Uh, <laughs> if you're going to enjoy the view, I guess. A that's little true. Bit. Yeah. Welcome to... Pizza may have helped police in British Columbia crack the case of stolen antique coins. Detectives say that the suspect used a rare quarter worth about $18,000 to buy pizza. Well, he allegedly admitted using other valuable coins to buy things like movie tickets. The coins were stolen back in May. The owner says that the 19-year-old suspect and his girlfriend worked for her. And those are some of the headlines we're following for you today on Weekend Express this morning. I'm Natasha Curry. It's been a busy week on the campaign trail, hasn't it? Both President Barack Obama and Mitt Romney have been courting the Latino vote, trying to see who's going to get it. Of course, the, then there was that secretly recorded video. And now Romney's 2011 tax return is a whole lot to talk about. Political contributor Jason Johnson and from Miami, Republican strategist Anna Navarro. Thanks, guys, for joining us this morning. Thank you. Jason, let's start Thank with you. you. Um, Governor Romney, you know, just released more information about his taxes. We've been waiting for this for quite a while, but I mean, not his full tax returns. We're talking about a summary here. Is that enough for voters, do you I, think? I mean, not really. Anybody who actually cares about Mitt Romney's... A summary? A piece of paper? Uh, the people who criticize... Quiet things down a little bit for him on that. I know his camp's open, so... But uh, let, let's talk about something else now, because there's a lot to cover. Let's talk about this video released on Mother Jones' website. Democratic voters rather than trying to court Democratic voters. That's the only thing I thought was wrong. He expressed what he believed, but you shouldn't insult the other people. You can get some. Anna, what do you think? The 47% comment, do you think that that's, you know, is that going to hurt him that much? Look, here's what I think. Control on this one. Can he get the Latino vote, guys? What do you think, Jason? No, there's little or no chance of that. I mean, look, he's not going to win the Latino. And Jason, I'm going to give you the final word on this. <laughs> For Romney to pull ahead and win this thing, what does he need to do right now? He needs to engage with third on the first debate. He needs to build it up and then knock Obama out then. Otherwise, his race is probably lost. All right, Jason Johnson, Anna Navarro, thanks so much. A lively thanks. debate. Appreciate it. The mom of a college lacrosse player who was murdered in 2010 is hoping to save other women. Yardley Love was killed three weeks before she was supposed to graduate from the University of Virginia. Her ex-boyfriend, who was on the men's lacrosse team, is serving 23 years in prison for the crime. Love's mom set up a foundation in her daughter's memory to help fight domestic violence. Businesses are rushing to build solar plants in the Southwest, but taxpayers are paying for this, of course. According to the LA Times, taxpayers have paid billions of dollars for solar projects, but the companies are also getting government grants, loan guarantees, and tax incentives. One expert said that power prices could go up by 50% with solar power. But a Department of Energy official says that those high power prices will go down eventually. He says the government needs to subsidize these companies to promote clean energy. This summer has been the hottest Ugh. on record for parts of the country. I don't have to tell you that. So, I mean, what a relief to welcome the first day of fall today. Tom Sater, our meteorologist, yeah. joining us to give us the scoop on the forecast for this week. You know, I always wonder what the crazies are doing at Stonehenge. You know? <laughs> Taking pictures of the big ball of fire in the sky. <laughs> yeah. the
an unemployed mother rode her daughter's bike 26 miles for a job interview. Drivers in the nation's capital, beware because you may be on camera the next time you pull up to a stop sign. It could result in a big fine. Sandra Endo explains. A little girl looked like she was springing off a trampoline when her soldier dad surprised her at school. Look. All right, that's all for today for Weekend Express. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you right back here tomorrow morning at 7 Eastern. Meantime, up next, HLN Mysteries. Have a great day.